Hello. Congratulations, Rich, on 35 years. You know, um, I still have those same towels. I haven't replaced them yet. You should see them now. It makes me very happy to be with this tribe. I notice Rich used the metaphor of tribe, too. I've been coming, if you noticed, I had brown hair when, in that shot. And uh, my Ophelia was still a teenager. And she turned 35 years old yesterday. So it's, it's been a while since I've been with this group of people. I thank you all for your kind attention to me all of these years. One thing I wanted to say, uh, I've used the metaphor of a family reunion to describe this group. But last night I was thinking, it kind of reminds me of the sun dances that we have in Nebraska for the different tribes, where once a year people come together to celebrate life and to tell their stories. So it seems like kind of a sun dance here this morning to me. Tomorrow I'm gonna, or today I'm gonna talk to you about the ideas in my ninth book, The Green Boat, Reviving Ourselves in Our Capside Culture. In it, I examine our individual and cultural responses to global climate change. I struggled preparing this speech. Thank you, thank you. No one really wants to think about these overwhelming problems. And I also want every one of you to be happy and have a good experience when you listen to me. And with this topic, as you can imagine, that's a challenge. That's a real challenge. So I'm going to start with the most difficult material. Then I'm gonna move into more heartening information. So please stay with me there will be a turning in this speech. <laughs> Isaac Dennison wrote, all sorrow can be born if it is put into a story. So I'm gonna begin by telling you my story. In the cataclysmic summer, I experienced what environmentalists call the oh shit moment. At that time, the Earth was experiencing its warmest decade, its warmest year, and the warmest April, May, and June on record. In Pakistan, it was 129 degrees. In Russia, it was 111. For the first time in memory, uh, lightning was igniting fires in the peat bogs of Russia. And these fires spread to the south as doctors from Moscow rode to rescue heat and smoke victims, they fainted in their unair conditioned ambulances. In July, the heat index in Lincoln, where I live, reached 115 degrees for several days in a row. Our planet and all living beings seem to be gasping for breath. In that same month, I read Bill McKibben's Earth, spelled E-A-A-R-T-H, in which he argues that the Earth, as we know it, has already vanished. He postulates we now live on a new planet, Earth, with a rapidly changing ecology. He argues that without immediate action, our familiar ways of life will disappear, not in our grandchildren's adulthoods, but in the lifetimes of middle-aged people like us here today. He writes that we don't have 50 years to save our environment, we have the next decade. None of my experiences had quite prepared me for the bleakness of Earth. I couldn't stop reading it, and when I finished, I felt shell-shocked. For a few days, all I could experience was despair. Everything felt so hopeless and so over. During this time, my grandchildren came to visit, and as we picked raspberries, I thought about all the care we lavish on these children. We make sure they eat healthy foods and brush their teeth with safe toothpaste. We treat and examine every little scratch and bite. And yet we, and by me, we, I mean all the grandparents of the world, including myself, hadn't worked hard enough to secure them a future with clean air and water and a diverse, healthy ecosystem. Had I been in a trance, 
That summer, when I talk, listened to my friends talking about the ordinary details of life, I wanted to shout at them, wake up, please, wake up. Our old future is gone. Matters are urgent. We have to do something now. But after years of being a mother and a therapist, I've learned that shouting wake up doesn't work. <laughs> In fact, that was one of my most dispiriting realizations. I wanted desperately to preserve the world I loved, but I didn't even know how to share this fact with my closest friends.